Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office a teardown lab. You can see I'm laying out the green towel. That can mean only one thing, of course, that we're going to be working on the quad speakers. So, if you recall, quite some time ago, we actually repaired one of these, and this is the Quad 9L Active. And it says uh, remote control, but this is not the remote control side. This is the right hand side speaker, which doesn't contain the DAC or the business logic of it all. Now, the problem with this speaker is that it's starting to basically turn itself on and off. So there is a mechanical on switch on the back. And when it's on, I'm just checking this, by the way, it all looks OK. When it's on, this LED comes on, this blue LED. And what I noticed was uh, that every now and then it would, I'd hear mono. And then I'd look over and the LED had gone out. And then what I discovered is if I power cycled it, that would often kick it back into life. So I suspect this could be starting to succumb to the capacitor issue that the other one did. So I thought, let's have a look inside here. And hopefully it will be a lot simpler because this one doesn't have any of that control circuitry. Oh my gosh, by the way, I don't advocate using an electric screwdriver. I just thought it would be a better fit for these screws, but it absolutely isn't. It's going to round them. This could be a job for this dinky little screwdriver. I have to admit, I haven't really been using this much because I haven't been pulling stuff apart as much. But uh, let's see. I mean, it's a little bit small, but it might do the job. Come on. Ugh. There you go. Now that is quite a tight screw because it's going straight into the wood. Not to matter though, we'll just continue on. I remember this thing did have a, a setting actually to adjust the torque. There we go. I think it was at the most torque. It's just very tight. That's why the other screwdriver was trying to round the heads. That's the last screw out, so hopefully that will come off now. Oh, indeed it does. And there are a whole load of gubbins, as expected. I've been trying to contort this to get a better view, but it's, it's not easy. So this is the best we can do for now. So I'm just going to unplug this, which I suspect is the front LED. And then we've got these rather chunky wires here, which I think are... I'd say you're going to the uh, one of the speakers, but look, there's loads of wires in here. Look how many you've got. You've got um, this whole connector. I mean, there is a, a metal thing in this one, and I suspect on the other side there, there's some sort of crossover. But let's pull that off. So that's that little Molex type connector. <laughs> and the rest is, this is really thick. Look, this is a mains wire going to that. Oh, of course. The power supply, that's going to be the power supply. This is bizarre. So there's going to be a big transformer in there. And then this is the amplifier board. So I wonder where the LED is coming on and off from uh, when it's connected to this. So maybe it's nothing to do with the power. Maybe it's to do with the amplifier board. So if I'm going to change anything, maybe I need to check these capacitors out first. Not going to lie, the construction of this is absolutely insane. These are all soldered on. And you see here and you think, oh, that's just uh, like hot glue. No, it's not hot glue. It's like that extreme industrial bloody uh, Loctite epoxy on here to seal all of this. There's no way you're getting these bits off without damaging something or needing that epoxy to put it all back together. So I think the best thing to do if you're in this position is to put this in a bubble wrap bag and leave it dangling over the side so it doesn't scratch anything while you figure out how you're supposed to extract this through that opening. And try with some archery forceps. Yeah, that's the way to do it. So always get yourself a set of these. They're super cheap. I mean, these aren't medical or anything, so... You can probably just get them off your normal dodgy tool like Rolson or Pro Tool or whatever distributor for a few quid. Uh, no, you can't see this, but basically there's a nut. Yeah. There was a nut teetering on the edge, and then as soon as that came away, it fell into the cabinet. Now I'm less inclined to go digging after it for now. I suspect it might be stuck onto a magnet somewhere, so I'll go get that later. However, I've got my own magnet on the end of this, so I can try to remove the serrated washer. So there's 
two screws this end and two nuts. So you can see the two screws, and that way there was two little nuts. Um, although, by the way, one was already missing, so I suspect it's just not fitted. And uh, yeah, it seems that that thing I undid has nothing to do with it. Oh, bugger. On the bottom there's four Allen keys. Let's see if there's any juice left in this bad boy. Oh. <laughs> Not so much on the juice, but I'll just use it as a normal screwdriver. It takes its time, but I guess it's better than you having to crank them out. Try again on this one. Yeah. It's okay. So I've got one hand in here to support it because I can feel a lot of tension on this particular bolt. Or machine screw, I suppose you'd describe it. Not really sure the difference between a machine screw and a bolt. I suspect it could be just the head. So let's rotate this very gingerly back down that way. Okay, so now that's technically loose. So this wire is connected to it. At least I'll be able to put that ground strap back on. There we go. Look, big old power supply and capacitors. That shouldn't be touching those. And it does give me an opportunity to see where that nut went. <laughs> Naturally, I can't find that nut, so I'm going to have to take the speaker out as I suspect it's hanging on to it back of its magnet somewhere. Okay, God, that's quite a heavy thing. And there it is, look, right there. Crikey. That's kind of cool that you can get it out. We can see a little bit more now inside this unit. So that is your speaker. That's your model D687A and it is quite a weighty beast and that's the construction if you know about such things. But you can see in there there's a whole load more stuff. I uh, believe that's the crossover and it has capacitors and coils and all this stuff and it does say even on the PCB on that quad 9L active. So these parts are made for it even though there's a bunch of different PCBs that we've found through these things. They do appear to be all made for this particular speaker. Now I'm just going to pop this one back in. So we don't really need to do anything with this anymore hopefully. And I did have a quick look on uh, the internet and they do some service items for these too. So if you have a broken one, I guess depending how it's broken, you can find the bits that you might need. I suspect you could always send it back to Quad and they'll definitely help you out for the right price. Anyway, I got a little bit more curious because I wanted to see what this speaker was and it is an, a D695A if you're looking for one and it's a Quad branded thing. Lots of goop on it, sealing it all up. <sighs> and there's another little bit more you can see of that crossover in there. Plenty of gubbins, quite a big board really. So I'm just going to push that back in. I, I kind of felt that this wasn't seating properly. That's the real reason why I loosened it all up. Because um, it was definitely sitting flush when I took it apart. <laughs> but it's definitely not sitting flush now. And it, it 100% has to sit flush. There's no way this is designed with it not sitting flush because it has to seal. So I'm going to just pop that out. Let's see if it will sit flush without that speaker in there. Yeah, that sits flush. So something to do with this interface here. I'm not aligning up right. Oh yeah, it's just totally me. There's a cutout here <laughs> for that. What a numpty. What an absolute numpty. There we go. <sighs> I'll just pop in those screws now. I thought my mind was melting. Luckily, there's quite a lot of heft to these enclosures. Nice. So I decided to, you know, do something unusual, and that was actually refer to one of my earlier videos to see what was wrong with that one, because it did actually have very similar, if not the same, power board. And it had a capacitor right here next to this resistor that was bulgy and lo and behold we have a look in here there's that bulgy boy so we definitely need to get in there and address it 
Uh, I'm wondering if I can get in without taking the board out. I think the answer is no. So I will just whip the board out and we'll have a look at see what value that capacitor is. Let's get this last screw out. Nice. A bit of varnish on those too. They don't want them slipping out by themselves. Do do. That's one. And that's the other one. It's a weird. Almost well, like water damage, but that's what's that's how it looks. Camoed. So where's this capacitor? Right here. So we'll wham up the soldering iron and we'll just wham it out. A commenter on the, the video actually mentioned that this resistor does look like it does get quite hot and you can see it, it is quite discoloured and this capacitor basically sits next to it. So when we put this back, I might leave a little bit more meat on these capacitor legs so that I can just bend it away from it so it's just not touching. I don't think there's worth trying to put an insulator or anything in there, but it's definitely worth giving it the full benefit of not being touching it. And congratulations, brush. You are now my new flux brush. And a good source of brushes is pinching them from your kids' arts and craft boxes. They will never know. I think they're pretty good. These will come out now. Yep. Yeah. Put the soldering iron away before we do ourselves a mischief. And there she is. We'll go in there. Yoink. And is there a polarity? Yes, polarity is written on the board, so we don't have to worry too much about that. And this is a 25 volts. 220 microfarads. Hurrah! And we look in our box of quality Bojack components from Amazon, and we can see we have a, it was 220, wasn't it? Yes, 220, 25 volts, which is this one here. So let's have a look-see. How's that one? Mm, that's the 330. I mean, to be honest with you, it probably worked fine, but that's the 220 there. And like all Modren components, they always seem to be a bit smaller, don't they? Hmm. I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. Same rating. So we'll pop that in. Long leg positive. And of course, you do have the negative marking on a capacitor, so you really can't get it wrong. However, I have recently got it wrong on a LED in the video. And the benefit of this capacitor, look, it's miles away from that one because it's just much narrower. That will do the job. You know, I'm not even worried if that doesn't last that long because it was quite easy to do. And I suspect when it will die, we're talking maybe a decade from now, I probably won't be too too bothered to have to change it then. I've got quite good use out of something that's probably cost me five pence. I do quite like the uh, Bojack brand on Amazon. So just if you are on Amazon, have a quick look. I mean, they just do loads of stuff in boxes. And, you know, I'm not affiliated to Bojack. I'm not even sure it's a real company. But uh, I do like the little case things they do. It's very handy for obvious like you and I. So I'm just going to pop that in. And what I could do, I could apply some mains power to this before I actually throw it in. But before I do, I will put back all of this stuff because it might be just a, a touch dangerous without it all on. <laughs> I'm looking, is that the right way? Why is there a cut over there? Oh, it's the moment of truth. Going to plug in the mains. Oh, hang on. Probably better to plug this end in first before plugging in the main, so I don't have to fiddle around too much. There is an on-off switch here. I'll get to that. Now I'm not going to hook up the LED because the wires is not long enough. Okay. And I'm just I'm just turning this around gingerly because I want to make sure I can 
access the import port here so we can see if there's anything going on. So turn it on. Oh, nothing blew up, but I did hear a tick because the speaker definitely has come on. And if I put something here, whoa, ho, 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 she lives. And that's all it took. Great. Of course, they always say that uh, reassembly is the same procedure in reverse. However, I did have this a little bit more dismantled, if you recall. However, I shall try it. And I'm going to be really ginger. I'm quite afraid that these capacitors are going to um, give me a bit of a zapping. I don't fancy that right now. So I'm going to just try to slot stuff in and hopefully it won't be too arduous. Uh, something to bear in mind, of course, don't lose your LED wire. And at the same time, don't tug too hard on your LED wire because you're liable to pull it out the front panel. And then you'll have to dismantle the whole thing just so you can poke it back through the hole. So I think the trick is to get one screw at least started. If you can get that lined up, I think you're golden. Got it. Right, the technique for you is to put in that one first because it'll just about sit right enough for that and that'll allow you to get it started. And once you've got that one done up reasonably, we should be able to pivot on that one. So let's try the pivoting maneuver. Uh, bubble wrap around this definitely because it, it has fallen off there several times uh, trying to totally scratch everything with its heatsink. So I'd advise you do that if you, ah, see, like that, see, see it's going, if you care about your finish which I, I kind of do, but I'm kind of also lazy. And is that the second one? Yes, that is. So if you've got two of the four, you keep going. And what I might do is just tighten these ones up at the end though. Once they've started, there's really nowhere else it can go. So I can hook up the LED wire and then just get all the back panel secured, everything. And then right at the end, just finish this last bit of tightening. And that is the last one. Look at that, hey? Eh? Good job. Good job, me. Right. Oh, now it's way easier now. Boom. Get in there, all you lot. Oh. Come on, Mr. Electric. Probably ought to charge it up. I don't think I've ever really given it its full charge. <laughs> Come on. The last screw, finally. And then we can chuck the power on it and see if our blue LED was hooked up correctly or not. I know that's always a bit of a worry. Um, yes, it came on. Phew. And it does come on after a little bit of a delay, actually. It might not. Let's see. Ready? Three, two, one, click. Sound. We heard the speaker go thump. Good, so there you go. So if you've got one of these Quad 9L Active, I want to say, yeah, 9L Actives, that's how you fix them. And uh, the lessons learnt today are, watch your earlier video though on the subject, because that would have saved me a lot of time. Thanks for watching. Yee.